السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين um, This will be my final uh, installment of the, the fasting rule book inshallah and uh, we have a, a great special Ramadan uh, ahead of us and actually you, you see the uh, how do I do this that the painting right behind me that I'm trying to capture uh, that is the, the verse of Allah Azza wa Jal Allah nuru samawati wal ard Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth um, meaning Allah is the creator and the source of light wherever it exists in the heavens and the earth and so the light of Allah for sure exists in his masajid but Allah is the one that puts light in the masjid. He can certainly put light in our homes this Ramadan. Gear up everybody. And that is why today, uh, though it is part of the fasting rule book, it's the one thing of the many things we won't be able to speak about. This is the one thing I didn't want to leave. Which is how to fast in a way that is not just valid, but rewardable. Because some people think there's, there's, they're one and the same. No, there's a big difference. You see... You know, some, there's different ways to explain it. But there are scholars, for example, who tell you that fasting happens on three levels. Many scholars mention this. The, there is the, the fasting of the masses, basically. People who just culturally adopt fasting. And it just, it's been normalized to fast in a Muslim society, a Muslim community. They say this fast, if it's done from the legalities that we discussed in the previous session, you stay away from... Uh, food and drink and things comparable to them, the, the invalidators, the legal invalidators. He goes, you stay away from that, you fasted. He goes, that's the bare minimum fasting. You don't get rewarded for that fast. You just basically absolved yourself of the obligation of fasting. That means your fast is valid. Allah will not ask you, why didn't you fast? You will not be punishable or liable for not fasting. But that doesn't mean you're going to get rewarded for your fast. Uh, you're not going to benefit from it after Ramadan. You may not reap any fruits from it on the Day of Judgment. May Allah forbid. You'd have to now add to the first level, uh, the second level of fasting, which is fasting from all that displeases Allah. Invalidating, invalidating your fast is, is not the only way to uh, displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every form of haram. And fasting is supposed to awaken in us and cultivate in us that taqwa, uh, so it's supposed to expand now, right, into the other parts of our life. And so that should happen beyond Ramadan and beyond food and drink during the daytime in Ramadan. Our Prophet ﷺ turned our attention to this, so we have to pay a lot of attention to it. Didn't he tell us, for example, alayhi salatu wasalam, رُبَّ صَائِمٍ لَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ صِيَامِهِ إِلَّا الْجُوعُ وَالْعَطَشِ Perhaps a fasting person will come away with nothing from his fast but hunger and thirst. You just stayed away from the nullifiers. You didn't gain anything. Uh, and you basically, you wasted your fast to a large extent. For example, the sins of our tongue. The sins of our tongue. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا كَانَ صومي يَوْمِ صومي أَحَدِكُمْ uh, When one of you is fasting, فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَفْسُقْ Let him not be indecent or obscene. Let him not be lewd. Let him not be sinful. Uh, and he said, وَلَا يَسْخَبْ Let him not be loud and boisterous. So even like fasting from speaking, by the way, like minimizing your words, not altogether, is part of perfecting your fast because, one, because the greatest gateway to sin is your tongue. And that's why he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in another hadith or in the hadith, مَنْ لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ Whomever doesn't uh, abandon dishonest speech, وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ And acting dishonestly, uh, meaning corruptly, well, uh, jahl and being foolish, and of course, every disobedience of Allah is foolishness. Um, you don't know the greatness of God. You don't know what it means, the, what could the, the consequence could be of defying Him, Subhanahu wa Taala. Whomever doesn't abandon these things, the Prophet ﷺ said, "فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ أَنْ يَدْعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ." Allah has no need for him to abandon his food or his drink. Uh, meaning, it's our need to develop that taqwa. Allah has no need for us to give up food and drink. As if we're doing Allah a favor, we gave him the... Because doing the bare minimums comes... It is becoming of someone with that attitude. That's what it comes from. And so Allah has no need. It's your need. And so that is the second level of fasting. Fasting not just from the nullifiers, fasting from the haram. So those first two levels are both mandatory. They're both mandatory. One for the validity of the fast, one for the validity of the reward of the fast and its potential. 
The third level, may Allah grant us and you a proper daytime so we can add to it a very special nighttime with Allah that fills our homes with light and fills our hearts with light. The whole project in Ramadan, when it's done correctly, when all of its parts, that is when you get to level three or when you have a huge opportunity that hardly ever comes at any other point in the year to get to level three. Level three is something you compete in. It is not mandatory like one and two, but uh, if we knew its worth, we would compete for it irrespective of whether uh, foregoing it was punishable or not. And that is the level of not abstaining from all that displeases Allah. That is abstaining from whatever will not bring us closer to the pleasure of Allah. So basically, level one, you pass that level, Allah will not punish me for not fasting. Level two, uh, you pass that level, you have escaped whatever may harm you in the hereafter, if you will, right? You're not liable for anything then. You've fulfilled all your obligations. Level three is when you are not interested in anything uh, except what benefits in the hereafter, so level two is abstaining from what may harm. Level three is abstaining from whatever won't benefit, whatever is not rewardable. Uh, or as some scholars say, uh, abstaining from siyam, from what, every, anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa mardatihi, and that which he is uh, loving and is pleased with, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so be very mindful of this, what you watch, what you hear, what you sp speak of. Minimize all of this. Be protective of your fast. May Allah Azza wa Jal make this a very special Ramadan that fills our hearts and our homes and our records of deeds with light and fills our faces with brightness and protects us from the darkness and the destruction that could befall a person on the Day of Judgment. Allahumma ameen. Jazakallah khairan everybody. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.